John 21, verses 15 through 17. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Welcome to Common the Chaos Interfaith Center. The scripture I read is from the book of John. The scene occurred after Jesus, standing on the shore, called to the disciples who were fishing, and they did not recognize him at first. When they told him they had caught no fish, he instructed them to toss their nets out to the other side of the boat, and lo and behold, it worked. The net was so full they could hardly haul it into the boat. Feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. Three instructions for what the twelve disciples were to do without Jesus on earth to lead them. Who are his lambs? Who are his sheep? For over 20 years, I raised Shetland sheep. They're a small breed, docile and pleasant, and while they lived on my farm, I learned a lot about sheep behavior. They recognized me and knew me as their shepherdess. Strangers, which to them was anybody other than me, caused them to move to the farthest corner of their pen or scamper outdoors to their paddock. They depended on me to take care of them. The grain in the bin had to be for sheep only because the pellets sold for sheep and goat sometimes has, has copper in it and copper is not good for sheep. They depended on me to have them shorn so they could be comfortable during the hot summer months. They depended on me to keep the water bucket full. Feed my sheep. Jesus is telling the disciples to care for the people who now followed his teachings, which also included caring for one another. He was saying, now that there are people who depend on my lessons of a loving God, now that they trust me, we need to continue to care for them. Those are the reported words of Jesus, the man who spoke on the shore that day. Now let's expand the thinking a bit. Jesus, the man, was representing a much larger idea, a much greater God than most people could imagine in his day, and most people can imagine today as well. He was representing the Christ, the cosmic idea that God oversees all people without regard to religions, geographic boundaries, politics, race, and the myriad of other divisive ways we humans have chosen to see the world. The big picture of what Jesus was saying was that people who know him and his teachings must care for all people because everyone in the global paddock is a child of God. Not just the people who identify as Jesus followers or nowadays called Christians, just as we've been told to love our neighbors, and everyone is our neighbor, we're being told to feed the sheep, our fellow sheep in the pasture, the ones with whom we share the world. It's a tall order. And Christians who've been taught about a judgmental God, a ruling God, a God who meets out punishment, people who've been taught about sin as a moral judgment, not as a human way of simply missing the mark with a second chance available. We must get over that teaching. We must grow beyond it because we are to feed everyone, not just those in our flock, those who look like us or believe what we believe. Everyone. As an interfaith teacher, I'd like to introduce you to the fifth largest religion in the world, but one that most people know very little about. 
the Sikh religion. The Sikh tradition acknowledges that all beings must strive to live in harmony with one another to achieve a peaceful world. Sikhs believe that all beings are one. There's no division because of race, geographic position, economic status, or religion. The two aspects of the Sikh religion that I highlight today are Seva and Langar. The word Seva may have crossed your mailbox when you received something from the Seva organization when they sent uh, something asking for donations, perhaps. They are a nonprofit group that restores sight to people in third world countries. The, world sa the word Seva is actually short for Kar Seva, which is from the Sanskrit words for work or hands, car, and service. Seva. The word langar means the food served to everyone, symbolizing the equality and unity of all. It's a vegetarian meal, same food on every plate, with many layers of meaning. The Sikhs are demonstrating that they mean what they say about feeding the world. The food is all donated, with 10% of Sikhs' earnings given to the poor. The reaching into the world with action, not only with rhetoric. You won't see an advertisement for Langar, although it happens in every major city. That's part of the humility. Sikhs want no recognition of their service. The Sikhs have a history of struggle, which led them to becoming the champions for the underdogs in the community. Sikhs wear five special articles on their bodies at all times, making them easy to identify. It also makes them targets for discrimination at times. Sikh men and women never cut their hair, which is one of the big reasons for wearing a turban, to keep hair neat and clean and out of the way. The Sikh religion grew out of the Punjab region of India, but as with most religions, Sikhs can now be found worldwide. Why was I moved to write about these God-filled people today? Yes, Sikhs are God-filled, monotheistic, believing in only one God, and they believe in living fully in this world, making their faith and their love known in their daily lives. They're not focused on an afterlife, personal salvation by either a God or a human. It's all about serving one another right here, now. If you are in a situation where there is a Sikh present and an altercation breaks out, be forewarned that the Sikh will come to your aid. Again, part of the vows of Sikhs. I'm not proselytizing, trying to convert anyone to Sikhism. First, it's not what I do. Each of us finds our own way with education and inspiration. But second, it's not what the Sikhs do. There's no evangelizing, no pulling others in to believe what they believe. There is huge respect for each of us to find our own way. What I'm doing is connecting the dots between and among religions. We have much more that connects us than we do that divides us. As with any religion that requires a person to follow a set of rules and follow prescribed doctrine, there are rather stringent rules that may seem super conservative in the 21st century. I invite you to do a little research into this religion if you so desire, because we are now going to return to our two words, Seva and Langar. Christians and Jews are committed to serving others as well. Christians and Jews scriptures command their followers to feed the world. In Jesus' language, it came across as, feed my sheep. So I ask, how are each of us doing with these two commitments, however they show up in our lives? During Lent, a Christian period of lament, reflection, and prayer, we often discover a deeper sense of spiritual life. 
Perhaps that depth can come from a renewed sense of feeding one another, both metaphorically and with food on the plate. And perhaps it can be without fanfare. I offer this idea to you today. Open the Airbnb.com website and in the search bar asking, where are you going? Type in Ukraine. Select a B&B &B that calls to you and book a night or two or 14. With Airbnb, no money exchanges uh, between you and the B&B owner. It's all done on PayPal. The cost of your vacation, the vacation you're not taking, will be deducted from your PayPal account. So choose dates this week. You'll be able to email directly with the owner, tell them that you're praying for them, ask them if they need something, and if mail is still coming to them, you could gather a friend or two to secure what is needed, and if you're able, send it to them. Direct aid. Remember, current gasoline prices are a way that we're fighting the war by cutting off some of the economic power. This isn't just politics. This isn't only economics. This is about people. Feed my sheep. Tend my lambs. Give them what they need and protect them from harm. We can act like Sikhs. We can make choices in Jesus' name, however you need to look at it. This Lenten season, we are given a huge opportunity to respond to the world with love. Don't miss your chance. Please pray with me. It's a prayer of the Ukrainian people, and our music recommendation today is the Kyiv Symphony Choir from the Ukraine singing the words of this prayer. The recording was made on their tour to Florida several years ago. O oh Lord, almighty and gracious, always keep our Ukraine safe. Give her the light of freedom. Show her the way of goodness. Give us, your children, wisdom and knowledge to learn and to trust. Bring us up in love of the land. Dear Lord, we praise you. We pray to you, Lord Almighty, always keep our Ukraine safe. Always be kind to our people. Never leave us without your grace. Give us freedom. Give us true life. Give us joy in this world. Give it to our people, Lord Almighty, to you alone, we pray. Amen.